This week's episode is brought to you in part by Empix, delivering the highest quality prints and products from your photos. Shoot today, upload tonight, we ship tomorrow. This week I've got a tip for you that'll make your selections a lot faster. And I have a quick tip for working with multiple layers. And I've got a quick tip for how to make a quick background to get you out of trouble. And I've got a design trick for presenting your images and it all starts right now. Welcome to Photoshop User TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. And now, here are your hosts, the Photoshop Guys. Welcome back, everybody, to another boisterous episode of Photoshop User TV, brought to you by the proud people named Dave Cross. You did that with such class. <laughs> I did it without even looking is the main thing. I'm I know. looking at Matt. And Br like, <laughs> brought to you by the <laughs> folks behind Photoshop User Magazine, the National Association of Photoshop Professionals, the makers of this magazine that, that Dave magazine. so nicely held in front of his face. Yes. We're back. I haven't been on the show in a while. Nor have it's, I. Yeah, we've, everybody's kind of been traveling been, a lot yeah, lately. Busy How you doing, Dave? I'm doing well. Been a Just, while? Yeah. yeah, got to do a little trip to Canada recently. And okay. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Everybody stands. <laughs> yeah, so that was cool. Got to see people in New York and Toronto and then visit my mom in Ottawa. So it was all good. Perfect. Yeah. All right, so. Uh, that sounds like a song. <laughs> it does sound it could like be. a song. I'll work you know, on that. So, so before, we, we, have, we have some great tutorials. Maybe not, but some, some decent tutorials for you. <laughs> but speaking of great tutorials, it is not often that one of our own Photoshop guys has a brand new book out. So we just want to take a moment and let you guys know about it. So Corey, Corey has totally, I think, knocked it out of the park because he's written um, a book that you know, if you if you look at the book market out there, there is no you know all these books include little design effects mm -hmm. here and there, but Corey actually wrote an entire book dedicated. To design. So it's called Photoshop Down and Dirty Tricks for Designers. Corey Barker, congratulations, Corey. Thank you. Yeah. Well done. I'm excited. It's really well done. I, I want to add like... one extra note because some people are going to look at this and go, oh, so it's for designers uh -huh. and I'm a photographer, so therefore I won't pick it up. And I'm going to say, you should take a look at it because when you see the effects that Corey does, many of them start with a great photograph. Mm -hmm. So I, it kind of inspires me to say, oh, I'd like to take a photograph to be able to, to make, do this kind yeah. of effect. So mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely has a design feel to it, but there's still a lot of really good ideas for photographers, yeah. for sure. Well, and, and I think that's the thing. I mean, designers designers need to know how to use photographs and make them look good, right. but photographers need to know also how to take things and, and add the design elements yep. that make them look good, I really too, wanted so. I really wanted it to appeal to a wider audience, so yeah. hopefully that does that. So. Oh, dude, you did great, man. It looks awesome, so uh, you can get this. Is it out on Is it out on all the dot-coms? All, dot all the familiar dot-coms, and of course, our, our site, Kelby Training, you can get a signed copy. Ooh, yes. sign. Order and make sure, you know, make sure you go to Kelby Training or on mm -hmm. Amazon because there's a promotional video for it too that kind of, exactly, I think yeah. it kind of gives you a look into the book mm -hmm. and lets you see everything about it. So congratulations, Corey. Appreciate it. Thank book you. looks well awesome, done. man. Yeah. yeah, I'm just going to read it now while you do something else because it's... Oh, do I have a tutorial to do? I don't know. Who's next? So let's see what it said. Oh, it says Mac. That's up next. Okay, that means I have a, tu a tutorial to do. Okay, so um, I have a, a technique here that I, I kind of... You know, Scott and I were talking one time about, about making selections with the quick selection tool. And one of the things that we kind of noticed, so if you make a, a selection with the quick selection tool here, and I'm going to even get part of his hair and part of his nose. So I'm not going to do the whole thing. But what I want to show you is if I go into Refine Edge, okay, and I want to, I want to get all that hair to be selected nicely. First off, what I'll do is I'll switch my background to white so you'll be able to see it. But you can very quickly get a great selection on the hair by turning on Smart Radius and just cranking up the radius setting. You can almost instantly see how much better it selects the hair. That's the original, and then that's, that's the result. The problem with this, okay, is when I take this back down to zero, take a look over here, like right along the edge and right along the edge of his face. Watch what happens to my hair. Let me zoom in for you. Watch what happens to my selection. See how it loses part of his face? It almost starts to become like semi-transparent. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can see through it right over here. So that's the problem. When, when you use the quick selection tool and you use Refine Edge to try to get everything to look right, the problem is, is I get the hair to look really good in one shot, right? But the problem, I, I still have that problem with the skin. So the skin, squin. <laughs> so here's what to do. Instead, make a selection of just the area that you know is really gonna be a problem. Okay, so I'll take away the, most of the face out of this selection here. 
So I'm just gonna worry about the part that's, that's really a problem, which is the hair. Then I'll go into Refine Edge. I can come on here, turn on Smart Radius, click OK, and let's, again, let's change this over to white. All right, and I can even come in here and paint away with a little brush. So now I've got a really, really good hair selection, mm -hmm. so I'll click OK. And then I take the quick selection tool and it's already in add mode. So now I just go around the edge because it's selecting this stuff's not hard right. to select because it's got it a very a great job contrasty. Yeah. yeah, it's got a very contrasty edge. So we already know that it's going to do a great job on that. It wasn't going to do a great job on that and the hair together. Mm -hmm. There's no way to make that dialog box work for both. Right. So instead, just make it work on part of it and then go in there and, and kind of clean it up later on. Very good. That's my tip and I'm sticking to it. Good. Well, it's a good tip. I like it. All right, Dave. Speaking of tutorials and all those fun things, it looks like you have something too. I do. I have a quick little tip. So if you have a quick, it seems to be our I word know, today. It is kind of quick, but it's quick. But we gotta say it boisterously. Boisterous. I have a quick. quick tip. Uh, so imagine for a moment, if you will, you're working on a project where you have a bunch of layers, and I had to use all these separate type layers because they're all different sizes, but I want them all to kind of line up. And now I wish to take all of these type layers and move them. Can I'm you imagine that? The, I am. I'm, or you I'm can just look at my screen right either way because it's also No, I'm imagining. Here. Okay. So I want to take all of these type layers and move them, but I, they're all spread out throughout my big long layers panel. So I just click on one of the type layers, go to the select menu, and choose similar layers. And then it finds all the type layers, mm. and now I can move them. So I don't have to link them, I don't have to group them, it just finds them. Similarly, simil in a similar fashion, <laughs> I can click on one of my shape layers and do the same thing, select similar layer. So whatever type of layer it is, now all my shape layers are selected. Now that's been in the last couple of versions of Photoshop, but in CS5 they added one extra little goodie, and that's now if I want to lower the opacity of all these layers, I can do it at the same time. Mm -hmm. In the past you used to have to do it separately, now yeah. you can select them all and lower the opacity all at once. So just a quick tip to quickly do something with quickness. All right, folks. Well. We're going to take a very quick break, <laughs> and when we come back, I'm sure we have some more quick tutorials for you, but in the meantime, we'll see you back here in just a minute. Composition. What is it? Does this work? What about this? Leading lines, rule of odds, the rule of thirds. Viewpoint. Patterns. Contrast. Balance. Dead center is deadly. I'm Rick Salmon. I really hope you can join me for my latest class on Kelby Training, Composition, The Strongest Way of Seeing. I'll show you how to compose technically as well as emotionally. Hey, we're back and we're gonna jump right over to tutorial from Pete. Pete, so b before we get into your tutorial, you have something in front of you that's actually blocking the weather station. It's, it's a huge weather pattern that's come in here. <laughs> this is the new uh, Wacom Cintiq 24HD and it is amazing. I've made many people jealous with this thing. Pete, and, uh, so, so Pete has fallen in love. <laughs> I, it, like he, he has, he does. He comes in every day. He hugs it. He kisses it, and uh, and he doesn't ever actually leave. I actually see him tuck it in when he leaves for the day. <laughs> it, it is a phenomenal machine, and the nice thing is I can, you know, if I'm working at my desk, I can take this thing and drop it down, and I can lean on it. This a lot of times when I'm drawing, I'm leaning on it like this. I'm hitting buttons up here that I don't mean to, um, and the great thing is it can then go all the way up and become a monitor up here. And uh, it's just beautiful. You got all these hot keys. It reads 2,048 different levels of pressure. So when I'm drawing, it changes according to my line. Pretty it, cool. It's, it's, it's nice. amazing. Uh, Does he have like an extra padlock on his office Pete, you door? do realize you have to give it back next week. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, please. It's mine. I it's go, my precious. It's going on precious. My precious. I, it made me fall in love with Cintiq again. I think it's awesome, yeah. <laughs> all right, what do you got, Pete? Okay, I got a quick tip, but I'm going to be boisterous about it. Okay. Uh, sometimes you need to create some sort of uh, background and you need to do it real quickly and you're just like everything you've got in your uh, stock images or whatever is leaving you kind of flat and you need to just do something that's kind of funky but you need to do it quickly. One of the things I like to do is I'll just simply pull up a picture that's got a lot of stuff in it and maybe I'll have some funky colors or whatever and this is the one time I get to use 
the fabulous single row marquee tool. Oh no. Yes. <laughs> yes, I needed to find a way yeah, to I use it. it too. <laughs> and I would just hit a spot that I think has a lot of details across it, and then I will simply hit Command or Control T, and I will pull it all the way down and all the way up, and I get, you know, sort of a, a random background. But say I, it looks a little, this would be good for like an industrial design or something like that, or, or use it to create some sort of backdrop or, or even kind of looks like curtains. But I can also then, to adjust it a little bit more, I can do blur and I can do motion blur. Let's say if it got a little choppy or something, I could smooth it out by going 90 degrees and just making sure it's smoothed everything down. But I kind of like sometimes to soften it up by using my motion blur to come across horizontally so I can give it a softer fabricy feel to it. And the more distance I put on it, the softer it's going to be and flow together. And you can add color, you can do all kinds of things, but using that single marquee tool right across a busy picture and then stretching it out will give you a funky background. Quick tip. Quick. Right. Well, well done in a quick manner. It was. Now, here's a question for you that, that might stump you, but could you also use the single column marquee tool go the other direction? You could if you, if okay, you go that way. <laughs> if, you, if you like to go <laughs> side to side versus vertically. Which, you know. Very good. Well, now we have our friend Corey, author of this brand new book <laughs> that we mentioned, uh, in the Corey area with a tutorial. In my corner. Yes. Here I am. Go for it. You, look, you always look happy over there, just content. <laughs> I, I'm happy. See, nobody bothers me over here. <laughs> I can work with everybody. You don't have a weather station to worry about. <laughs> you don't I'm have just tornadoes got, you know, and hurricanes. It's just. <laughs> I have no idea what's coming up on the screen here. So. <laughs> All right. You don't want to know now. <laughs> what shall I do? Well, Somebody actually emailed me about this, uh, this interesting trick as a way to, to display your images. And I actually saw this um, on, on Pixar's website, funny enough. I visit their site often. <laughs> a Pixar fan. Hard to imagine. Anyway. You watch their movies often, too. Uh, that, too. <laughs> but I watched Cars 2 the other day, and let me say I was disappointed. Never mind. Really? All right. <laughs> I thought it was cute. Anyway. <laughs> uh, what I want to do is first uh, add a background element here. And I've gone ahead and have a layer with a background fill of black. I'm going to add a layer style, and I'm going to use a pattern I've already defined by doing a pattern overlay fill. And I've got a, um, like a carbon fiber texture here. I've discovered that carbon fiber texture, it's like bacon. No matter what image you put it on, it looks cool. <laughs> okay, yeah. I was waiting for the other part. I was like, how is carbon fiber like bacon? It's like, it's okay. like the oh, bacon. Yummy. Yummy. <laughs> it's like the bacon of your image. Yeah, just add some carbon fiber, to, and it's got cool factor automatically. So. <laughs> So I'm just, the reason why I like to do it as a layer style, of course, is I can scale it. As you can see right here, you just move the scale slider and you control the pattern. All right. I'm going to give it a little bit of a light effect with a gradient overlay. And let's put it in soft light mode. And we'll just make it radial. So it just adds a little bit of a background element there. It looks pretty good. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank layer. And we're just going to grab the rectangular marquee tool and just draw a rectangle here in this kind of on the left side of the image here. And it's going to fill that with a base color gray. Now, this is where smart objects, objects come into play. And I'm doing this because Dave's here today. Yay. Yes. <laughs> Not really, but I thought I'd, it sounded good. <laughs> but uh, what I'm going to do is take this um, gray box I created and just convert that layer to a smart object. And I'm going to go inside that smart object. Just go ahead and double click on the layer. Opens up that image. Now, what I have are um, a few images here from my book. No accident. <laughs> From my book. Available now. That I'm just going to use as uh, samples, like display images here. So I'm going to take this first one, just drag and drop it inside the smart object file. And let's just scale it so it can be seen a little bit. More of a preview image. I don't want the whole thing to fit in there. I'm just going to close that and save the changes. Now I'm going to make a duplicate of this smart object. I'm just going to simply press Command J. And this is going to be the reflection of this image. I'm just going to go under the Edit menu and go to Transform and choose Flip Vertical. And then we'll just hold the Shift key down and drag it down until it snaps to the bottom edge of the image there. And of course, to get a reflection, a nice faded reflection, we'll add a layer mask to the image. And we'll just use a gradient tool and just give it a nice fade up. There we go. Now. That uh, element is made up of two smart object layers. Now, what I'm going to do is select both of those smart object layers and contain them in another smart object, basically nesting smart objects now. So we'll just right click on it, choose Convert to Smart Object. So now that entire thing is one element. So now I'm going to create two more. So I'm just going to make a duplicate. Now, 
I don't want the elements in this smart object to be linked to the duplicates I'm going to make. So I need to make a different kind of copy by just right clicking on the layer and inside the menu going to choose new smart object via copy. So that means that the contents are no longer linked to the original smart object. We'll just drag this duplicate over. And I'm going to create a third one. Let's go ahead and just right click on that. Again, new smart object via copy. And there we go. So I'm going to go back to that second one, that first duplicate I made. And this is the cool part. I'm going to go inside that smart object again. And then again, inside the original smart object, there's that. So we're three layers deep, basically. I feel like I'm in the movie Inception. <laughs> We're three layers deep in this smart object. So I'm going to go in and bring up another image and just drag and drop that into this file. And we'll just scale it to fit slightly. Close that. It's going to update in the next file, which is the image and its reflection. And then when I close that file and save the changes, it'll update in that original file. So we can just do that again to the last one here real quick, since we're a quick episode. So I'll just drag this last image in here. There we go. Close it, save the changes, it updates. And again, remember to make that smart object via copy so it doesn't link to all the original objects. So now you can see I have three different reflected elements here. And if I select all three of those, here's one final cool trick. If you select all three of those, you can nest those in their own smart object and then distort this entire graphic as a whole. So I'm just going to go and do a warp on this. And we can just kind of warp it and get kind of an interesting result and actually create kind of a sense of an environment in there. But done completely with smart objects, I can always go into those smart objects and replace those images and scale them up and down, and there's no destruction to the original images. Sweet. You, you don't have a know. Kleenex? I'm getting all teary-eyed from all this smart you, you, object work. Yeah, it's you do know you owe Dave happy. $5 for every time you say <laughs> every time, yeah. So did you add that up? I saw you over there tabbing it up there. So. Hey, so I'm yeah, just but it's in Canadian money, yeah. so. That's about the same now. Hey, I'm looking through the book yeah. that Cory Barker happened to <laughs> Happen to write. Um, you mean the author, Corey Barker? The author, Corey Barker, which, did we say congratulations yet? Yeah. This is Corey's first book, so mm -hmm. he's, he's our Photoshop guy. It's, it's big news for us. Um, all right, can people download all the graphics and uh, yes. everything that kind of goes yes. along the follow the, along? Uh, yeah, everything's uh, designed so you can follow along. Uh, and I, was, I, was, I actually would say it in the book, it's like follow it step by step as it is in the book, but then experiment with the images or other images and play around with the well, techniques. Well, one of the things that you did, which I think is pretty cool at the end of, of most of the tutorials, is another image with that effect, a variation an on alternate the theme. Yeah, yeah. yeah like if it has a very like you, like if you did it on a photo of a guy, like in a movie poster, yeah. you kind of use the same effect on like a car or something like right. that, just to mm -hmm. show you it's it's so you see variation. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. very cool. Dave, do we have contest time? I think we have a break first. First, we have a break, and then we have contest time. That's my belief. I, that's I'm just saying that because you I'm take reading it, Dave, it over there. I, I don't. I can't. So. I, yeah, I can't read. So <laughs> we'll be back after this brief break, which at that time we will do contests and prizes and important things like that. Are you sure? That's what it says. It's going to be boisterous. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Corey Barker, author of the new book Photoshop Down and Dirty Tricks for Designers. My inspiration uh, for the longest time, even since I was a kid, was, has always been films, television shows. You know, everybody says, you know, don't watch too much television or, or movies, but you know, in my case, it actually helped because it really, really fueled my creativity and curiosity. Well, I wrote this book because I, I know what inspired me as, as an up-and-coming designer, and, and this is the book I would have been looking for. There are books out there that, that teach you the program, but don't teach you to be creative. And I think that's one of the things that's going to be different about this particular book, is not only does it teach you things about Photoshop, but it also teaches you how to think and look at things a little differently and maybe a little bit more creatively. If you're starting a designer, or even if you've been a designer for years, you're going to get something out of this book. We start from scratch or start from a basic photo and go all the way to the end to a finished product. There's no opening up a file that's 60% done, and then showing you how to do those final touches. No, we're gonna go from the beginning to the end on every single tutorial. Whether it's you're trying to figure out how to create that great logo effect, or even do a full-fledged poster, you're gonna have the elements and tools you need right here inside these pages.
All right, we are back, and a couple things to finish up the show. First off, we have contest, Dave. We do. And uh, if you've been watching for a while, you know we kind of gave up on the whole answer to this question and saying it's just getting too complicated. So now just <laughs> go to the Kelby TV website where you see Photoshop User TV and uh, leave a comment of some nature, even just, hey, it's good Hi. Hi. Show I anything, any tutorials you want to see covered yeah, in the ideas show? ideas are good too. That's good. And uh, if you name our chosen, you will win this fabulous prize that we, have we mentioned? I'm just kidding. Yeah. We have. Uh, Corey's book will uh, be your prize and I'm sure for an extra $5 you could get him to sign it. And yeah, he'll definitely pay you five dollars to sign it. There's <laughs> no question in my mind. <laughs> All right, well, guys, I think that is about it. Pete, yes. thank you very much for for being here and just. I was only semi boisterous. One last so. time with you weren't as boisterous as I thought with that yeah. wet word because you came up with the word. You know, didn't you? you reminded him he's only got that Cintiq for a little longer. So I he's think that's that kind of toned you down a little. You know, a little give, sad. give it a hug. <laughs> Start saying goodbye now. <laughs> It'd be funny if we had that <laughs> that voice to men song. <laughs> how do I? How do I? There you go. Okay, no Darcy's more already used that one, you know, so. yeah. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> right. Up that camera. Corey, yeah. once again, congratulations on the oh, new book. I appreciate it. Thank We're proud you. of you, and uh, and it looks great, and it will most definitely sell great. Dave, missed you, man. Yeah. No. Hey, it's been a while, you know. But all that traveling stuff. Seminars. Cool still too. got one couple more seminars coming in. 2012, and I mean, uh, whatever this year is, 11, 2011. 2011. I'm already <laughs> thinking ahead to next year already. Gosh. All right, well, hey guys, thanks for watching, and we will catch you again next week. Bye.